Okay, so guys, listen up. So I do apologize. I wanted to get the uh, study guide out today. I'm gonna I'm gonna have I'm gonna give it out on Monday because there's one other concept I want to have before I put a study guide together. So if Monday we'll go over the study guide. I'll give it out. Then that'll give you time for Thursday. I'll do a video. Uh, probably I'll try to do it. What I'm gonna try to do is get the study guide together and a video at the same time. That way you you can go over it. Um, Xavier, question. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm gonna have to put that off a little bit. I'm sorry. Okay, I did say math basketball. Let's do this. Let's play math basketball because I need to get one more concept in. Um, let's do it. Yeah, let's play math basketball on Monday. Sound good? And we'll use math basketball to, to be a good way to do uh, Monday. Sound good? So yeah, you, can, you guys can hold me to that. Um, let's play math basketball on Monday. I apologize because there's I, there's one more concept I want to get in the books, and then we can just start practicing everything, going back and reviewing stuff. Sound good? And then we'll be ready. So I think I don't think I'll do a new concept. I don't know. I'll, I'll take that back. I probably will probably review on Monday, maybe Tuesday, and then we'll start our circle units. We'll start circles on uh, um, starts doing circle stuff on probably Tuesday ish, Wednesday ish. Okay, but obviously there won't be circles on the test. All right. So the last thing I want to talk about today. So we'll do uh, math basketball. Hold me to it on Monday. Uh, practice study guide for the test, the tr trigonometry test on Monday. Video. There should, I'll make a video of it. Bless you. Okay, here we go. So the last thing I want to talk about today, guys, the last concept we were going to talk about is a concept of something called vectors. Okay. Now, one of my favorite movies is this. So I want to play this really quick. Okay. All right. Hold on. Oh, I see it right there. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's just listen to this. Let's relax, Sam. I know you're excited. Hold on. We got to turn that up. That's not, that's not. Hold on. Hold on. No, we, yeah. Turn that up. We got, we got, we got, to, we got to turn that up to high volume. Okay. All right. Shh. Now. I'm not playing this just because I know this is a great movie, but it actually has a really good math concept that he talks about. So here we go. Just listen. You're going to miss it. Here we go. Great movie, but what he talked about was he gave a really good definition of a vector. It's a mathematical concept that represents magnitude and direction. Okay, so that's what a vector is. I want you guys to write that down. Okay, a math, it's a math concept that represents magnitude and direction. That's what a vector is. Okay, can you play that slowly? A math concept that represents magnitude and direction. A math concept that represents magnitude and direction. That's what a vector is. Now, there's one other thing I want to add to that. Okay, the last thing I want to add to that is we often represented as an arrow. Often represented as an arrow. Oh, um, wait, so what do you want to add? Okay, so does anyone have that whole thing that I just said right there? Why? Go ahead. Math concept that represents magnitude and direction often represented by an arrow. Very good. Okay. So today we're going to talk about the concept of vectors. Now, what we're doing today is just scratching the surface on vectors, okay? 
<clears throat> I have a degree in math. And about the last two years of my math degree in college, we almost everything, there was so much vector stuff. And the whole point is this. You, we're going to scratch the surface. You, will, you won't you will see vectors a ton until probably after this, until pre-calculus. And then if you ever go into more, if they're really a useful thing, especially for like pilots, there's just a really, it's a really cool concept that visualizes something. Now, before we talk about magnitude, before we talk about, I'm going to show you some stuff. Magnitude is just a measurable thing. Now, here are some things in the real world that we like that magnitude. Speed is the, probably the most common use of a vector, okay? Distance is a vector, uh, a magnitude of a vector, okay? So speed and distance are, uh, time is a vector. So all that that whole little formula, excuse me, time is a magnitude. That whole little formula that we had, um, that, those were all magnitude measurements. Time, speed, and distance. Those are all magnitude. Weights, you could do vectors as weights. Uh, Anything that can be measured is a magnitude of the vector. Now, what the magnitude of the vector is, if we're, if, and I'll show you in the picture here, if we're, the magnitude is going to represent the length of the, of the arrow. Do you guys understand that? The longer the arrow, the, uh, the greater the magnitude. So a lot of times what happens, I'll see sometimes on the weather, weather channels will sometimes represent winds as vectors. When you see those long arrows on the map, that means the winds are blowing really fast. You guys understand that? Whoa. Short arrows mean the winds are slow. So the magnitude is being represented by how long the arrow is. Now, if the, if the direction of the arrow is which way the wind is coming from. So there's a couple ways to represent direction. You can use um, compass directions, like west, northeast, southwest, okay? And you also oftentimes want to involve degrees like a 30 degree angle or something like that. So magnitude is often represented by speed, time, distance, weight. There's anything you can measure that you can use, that'll be the length of your arrow. Direction is what, you know, and oftentimes, it's, especially if you're talking about speed, distance, and time, direction is really important, where, you, where you're coming from. And that's often represented either on northeast, southwest, or We'll look at a couple other things. You guys with me on that? Okay. Now, and it will involve trigonometry. And th th there is a connection to trigonometry here. All right. So let me kind of move this down here. So here is a vector, okay, represented as an arrow. Okay. Now, the there's a lot of different ways you can represent a vector. So here, this red arrow is a vector. Now, it's not, you have to think about it. It's not, this arrow does not mean it goes on forever. Okay, that's, that's not what vectors, vectors actually have a, a magnitude, they stop, they're not infinitely sized. So in this case, this magnitude, this, fir this first point right here, I call it point K, that's called the initial point. And this last point out here, W, where it stops, that's called the terminal point. Okay, see that? The magnitude is the length of your vector, and the direction is just the angle in which it's moving, okay, or the direction in which it's moving. Okay. Now, there's two different well, there's ways we can symbolically write vectors. We can write them with the terminal point, the initial point, and the terminal point with a half an arrow over the top. Okay, see that? Or we can give it a lowercase letter with a half an arrow over the top. So we could call this, uh, it's just like we could name a, uh, a line segment little a, right? We could call, we can name a, a vector little u, but show it's not a segment, it's actually a vector, we, um, we put a little half arrow over the top. Now, here's a reason why it's important. So the big difference between a line segment and a vector is a line segment has a magnitude, but it often does not have a direction. You guys understand that? It's not moving in a particular direction. Where a vector is, you're moving from the terminal, the initial point to the terminal point. You guys with me on that? Okay. So any questions on kind of the symbolism, what the, you know, the arrow notation, representation of a vector? There's, there's, this, there's, there's, we're just scratching the surface here. There is no way, I mean, the rest of this, I mean, there's no way I can cover everything about a vector. It's just an introduction, a quick introduction to vectors, okay? It will be on the test, and once you see it, it it's really just an application of trigonometry. You guys with me on that? 
Okay, now, another way to represent vectors is called coordinate vectors, okay? Okay, a coordinate vector has, a coordinate vector has like, like a coordinate point, except instead of using the, the, the kind of the, the parentheses, we use pointy brackets. Okay, see that? Okay, now, what does a coordinate vector do? Whenever you do a coordinate vector, you're assuming that the initial point is the origin. Okay? You guys understand that? Now, it, a vector, this vector right here, and I, I'm going to, if I, I can take this vector, it doesn't matter where the initial point and the terminal point are. I can take this, this vector, I can move it all around here. It's the same vector, okay? See this point? See this vector right here? It has the same direction and the same magnitude. It doesn't really, it doesn't change the, the value of the vector by moving it. But it's not a coordinate vector. We can't represent with coordinates until we put that initial point at the vertex, right? See that? Yeah. Or at the origin. Okay. So that's supposed to be at the origin. You guys understand that? Yeah. So if you ever see a vector represented with pointy brackets, it's telling you that the initial point is just starting at the origin. Okay? You guys understand that? So really all you have to worry about is this coordinate right here is just the coordinates of the terminal point. Okay, see that? Because you don't have to have the coordinates of the initial point because you're just assuming if you put use this bracket notation that you're always going to start at the origin. Okay? It's just a nice, nice thing to have. Okay? And you can think about it, when you're dealing with northeast southwest, there's really no origin in northeast southwest, right? There's no center point of where all northeast southwest starts. That can always be shifted. Okay, so that's kind of the point here. A lot of times these vectors are going to be on the northeast southwest point. What's that called? The coordinate, no, the compass, 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 compass to rows, compass directions, whatever. Okay, any questions there, guys? Okay, um, now, so let's 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 describe this vector right here. Okay. Okay. So we're going to describe vector u as an ordered pair. So we want to. We want to describe this vector right here as a coordinate. Okay, see that? Now, what have we been given? We've been given the direction, which is a 38 degree, 38 degrees, right? Here. Okay. And we've been given the magnitude because we're saying this, this vector is 80 units long. But what we but if we want to represent it as a coordinate, we need an x value and a y value. You guys understand that? Okay, so here's where trigonometry is going to, so I'll give you guys a second, so copy this down, this is, we'll call this example number one, okay, and now what we can do is we can go ahead and call this, uh, find, we're going to write this as a coordinate vector, so what we want to do is we want to write this vector with those symbols, okay, you guys understand that? So in other words, we need the terminal point, we don't have the terminal point. We have the direction, 38 degrees, and you know, 38 degrees uh, uh, underneath the x-axis. But we don't, and we have the magnitude, which is 80. But we don't have these coordinates here. We need these coordinates. Okay. So what are we going to do? We're going to create a right triangle here. Big surprise, right? We're going to we're going to create a right triangle. Now, what we need to figure out is we need to find this value right here. This is the x value. You guys understand that? And we need to figure out this value right here. This is the y value. Okay? You see what I'm saying here? So what we're doing here, class, is we're trying to figure out the x value and the y value. And what is this? Now we've made this green line. This vector actually represents the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Big surprise. We're dealing with right triangles again, right? Okay, so what, how do you think we could find x? What could we do to find x? We could use cosine. You guys understand that? So cosine, we could use cosine to find x. And what could we use to find y? We could use sine. So really, what we have here is, so if we want to use cosine, we can use cosine to figure out what the x value is, okay? Because cosine, this is the adjacent side, and this is our opposite side. 
So what would be the equation we would write to figure out the x value? Because we need to figure out right here, we want to figure out that number. What would be the equation we'd write here? So cosine of 38 degrees equals what, class? x over 80. And then we're going to solve for x, so what are we going to do on both sides? Multiply both sides by 80, so we get x equals... 80 times the cosine of 38 degrees. Awesome question. That's not cosine. I'm just over adjacent. So we're using this 38 degrees. Cosine. cosine. Remember Sokotoa. Oh, so opposite yes. over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Opposite over adjacent. Right? Sokotoa. Okay. So can you guys help me out? Put that into degrees. So this is about 76. Oh, oh, 65.05. 63. Okay. Uh, Tess, what did you get? Okay. What did you get, Tanner? So uh, what did you get, uh, Cody? So math by democracy, terrible way to do math, 63 degrees. Got it? Okay, now, how would we figure out the, the y value here? Tanner, what would we do? Right, so what would be the equation we'd do for the sine? Sine of 38 equals y over what? 80, right? And then what would we do to solve, Tanner? So y is equal going to 80 times the sine of 38. And what do you get, Tanner? Roughly 49 if we round. Okay. Question? Right. So, yeah, there's a lots of connections here. With the slope is, the slope would be, uh, the slope in this case would be the, the sine over the cosine. You guys understand that? That's a, that's, a, that's a concept that you just learned. Yes, so you can see, Cody, very nice job, that really this coordinate is part, is another way to write the slope. That's exactly right. Rise over run. Very good. Okay, there's, it's going to all connect into other things. Okay, it's kind of a beautiful thing. Okay, now we can also add and subtract vectors very easily. Okay, so... All right, so um, we can also add and subtract vectors very easily. So let me kind of show you this. I'm going to, okay. So when you add and subtract vectors, let's say that we have a vector of coordinate. We're going to say our vector A is 5, 3. Can you see that? And our other vector, B, we'll say is negative 4, 2. So remember, guys, these are just the terminal points of a vector that starts at the origin. Can you see that? And if we want to add our vectors, and we always want to give it a new name, okay? The, the answer to an addition or a subtraction problem of a vector is called a resultant, okay? So the answer is also going to be a vector. And I'll show you how that looks in a minute here. So vector C is going to be the resultant of the, of the uh, sum of vector A and B. And all you do is just add the x coordinates and add the y coordinates. Can you see that? It's a very simple concept. So we're going to define vector C to equal the sum of vector A and vector B. So when you add them together, vector C is the coordinates 1, 5. This is the resultant of those two vectors. Now, it's going to, really, it's going to really make a lot of sense once you see it on the coordinate plane. Okay? So go ahead and copy that down. So very easy math, not a lot of hard concepts here. Yeah? Do you only use like the, whatever they're called, those kind of parentheses when it's vectors? Only vectors, yes. Okay. And it's pretty universal. Okay? Now math books kind of get to create most of the time vectors, also sometimes in math books, really heavily bolded lowercase letters are also used as vectors. So, but I won't get into that. There are multiple ways. But normally, if you ever see pointy parentheses, you're dealing with vector coordinates. You guys understand that? Okay. All right. 
So what is this going to look like on the coordinate plane? Well, it's going to, it's something is really cool going to happen. So what I've done is I've graphed my three vectors here. Okay. See those three vectors, A, B, and C. Now I wrote them all as a coordinate vectors, right? Now it doesn't make a lot of sense, but watch this. Now what we, we said that A plus B equals C, right? So watch, if I can take this vector, remember, it doesn't matter what you do with vectors. I can move A, this is called tip to tail. I can take that red vector, I can move it, and I can put tip, to, it's called tip to tail. So what I do is, if I, I know, it's, it's just stupid. Okay, we're going to call it good. So what, if you notice, you can see that vector A plus vector B is going to equal vector C. You can see how, how, what a vector will look like. See that? Isn't that pretty cool? So you can, now this vector, we wrote, originally we drafted as a coordinate vector. But you can move it around, right? Right. And you so. can move other things around too. You can see that, I think if we could do, um, you could subtract and get other vectors. So if we say what, vector C minus A is B, right? Is that right? So, so you could take C. Let's see. We can do a bunch of things, but but the, the the clear thing is to see that your resultant vector is this blue vector, right? So if you take vector A and you add vector B, you get vector C. See that? And this is called tip to tail method. Tip to tail method. Okay, you put them, you graph them all as a uh, coordinate vector. And then you move the resultant, uh, actually, you, you move the other one and, and show that the sum make the resultant. Okay? All right. Now, you're probably wondering, when would you ever use this? Well, here is a problem that we could use it. So I made up a word problem here. You guys ready? Okay, here we go. So it has nothing to do with, okay. So here, okay, write this down. Hody, Hody's pet bird, Beaky. Escapes out his window. Beaky, sorry, this I got like, lands. Beaky lands. Yeah, Beaky lands in a tree that is 300 miles west and 640 miles south of Hody's window. Beaky traveled directly to the tree. So go ahead and write that down really quick. Okay. Yeah. Hody's pet Beaky. Pet bird Beaky escapes out his window. Beaky lands in a tree that is 300 miles west and 640 miles south of Hody's window. Beaky traveled to uh, Beaky traveled directly to the tree. So Beaky didn't go in a Beaky went in a straight line, right? Well, yeah. Well, it's, I'm setting up the word prop. There's multiple parts of this. Okay. Does everyone understand? Have you guys ever heard the saying "as the crow flies"? You. I don't know. Ask Cody. Yeah, use a Y. Okay. I don't know. Ask Cody. I don't know. It's just some random kid. I don't know. Yeah. What you saying? Didn't know. Exactly. Well, you guys don't know him. I know. He's making stuff. I don't care about Okay. You guys with me on that? Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to represent Hody's bird Beaky's trip on a compass plane. So that's the first thing. And then we're going to describe Beaky's vector as a coordinate. And we're going to describe Beaky's magnitude and direction. You guys understand that? Okay. So here we go. Here is the compass plane, right? Okay. So northeast, southwest. You ever heard of that? Yep. You guys need the, like that? Okay. So we're going to do this. We're going to do three things with this word problem. We're going to represent Beaky's vector on a compass, a compass plane. Our compass rows. We're going to describe Beaky's vector as a coordinate, 
and we're going to describe BP's magnitude and direction. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so when you curl down, it's like, do we do we label it this way or this way? Because you labeled it. Did I label it wrong? You labeled it counterclockwise. What what did I do wrong? It's, it's never ah, been done ah, waffles. Ah. Oh, sorry. Oh, wow. uh, sorry, sorry. Never waffles soggy. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Make me feel bad. Okay. Who remembers it like that? Okay, here we go. Okay. So now, what we're gonna do now, ladies and gentlemen, is we're gonna. Okay. So here's what Beaky did. So let's go back here. So if this, we're gonna make the origin of our compass, Cody's window. You guys understand that? Go ahead, Sam. So this point right here, I'll do it in blue. This point is going to represent the initial point of Hody's window. Now, H Beaky flew, let's see here. Beaky flew uh, 300 miles west and 640 miles south. So we know that Beaky flew how far to the west, guys? 300. So from here to here, how much? 300. 300 here. And how much south did Beaky fly? He flew back from where he came from. Okay. How far down did Beaky go south? 600. So let me do this. I'll make it a little more to scale than this. Okay. So we'll make it here. We'll say 300. This distance from here to here is 300 okay now he didn't travel this path this is just how much west he ended up you guys understand that and then yeah draw this out and then beaky went how far south 640 so we'll do we'll do red in his south direction okay so beaky went south 640 we'll say like here this is 640 now again Beaky didn't travel the blue and the red paths. What Beaky traveled was what we say as the as the okay. as the crow flies. I don't think maybe he's a crow. I don't know. So now, Beaky's actual path looks like this vector right here, right? It's gonna be right like like, like that. Sound good? So that's Beaky's vector. Okay. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to describe Beaky's vector. Well, first of all, we need to put it on the coordinate plane or the compass plane. You guys see that? The next thing we want to do is we want to describe Beaky's vector as a coordinate. Well, again, we want those pointy coordinates. So again, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make a right triangle. See that? Okay. So. This red line, I guess we could draw a right triangle because this red line here, we could just move it over here, right? Because they're parallel like that. So now we have a right triangle and this is 640. You guys with me on that? What's that? Okay, so now, what, how could we, so how could we represent this as a coordinate, guys? So 300, comma 640. You guys see that? Wait, would it be negative? Negative 300, comma negative 640. So yeah, that'll the negatives will tell us we're down in the third quadrant. You guys see that? Now, Sam made a good point. Now, what's the point? Well, it doesn't really help us a lot with the coordinate but it's going to help us a lot when we describe Beaky's magnitude and Beaky's direction. You guys see that? Now, to find the magnitude, what could we use to find the magnitude here, class? We could use the Pythagorean theorem. We have two sides of a right triangle. Remember, this is C. So right now I want you to figure out, and let's round it to the tenths place. Let's figure out Beaky's magnitude. Okay. So that's what did it. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And now we can use the Pythagorean theorem 
to find BP's magnitude. Now, in this case, BP's magnitude is going to be distance, right? We're measuring distance here. It'll be different. What? Kind of see why we're going to need this right triangle here? We don't need it for the coordinates, but we absolutely need it for the, the, the de description. So who can raise your hand and tell me what is Beaky's magnitude? What do you got, Martin? I got 706.8. 706.8. So Beaky's magnitude is going to be 706.8 miles, right? Beaky's a good flyer. Right now, to find the direction, what we need, class, is we need this angle right here. Okay, I'm gonna call it theta. Okay, theta is a Greek letter we often use for angle measures. How could we find theta here, guys? Definitely trigonometry. What Sokotoa rule could we use? I would definitely use tangent. We could use sine and cosine, but that would be using a rounded answer, right? So let's use let's use tangent because we don't use tangent a lot. So let's use tangent. So what would be tangent of theta is equal to what class? Uh, Three hundred divided by two forty. Three hundred. So it's opposite, uh, well, opposite over adjacent, right? So let's switch that six forty over three hundred. Okay, see that opposite over adjacent. See that. So someone give me the answer there. What do you get for your tangent? What do you get? So what's the, what's this? What is this? Uh, we're going to be taking the tangent of theta equals what, Xavier? About what? What's uh, 640 divided by 300? 2 point what? 2.133. Okay. So we'll call it the good there. See that? Now, again, we don't want the tangent of theta. We actually want theta. So what are we going to have to do to both sides, guys, to find the angle? We got to take the tangent inverse. So this whole problem is going to boil down to taking the tangent inverse of uh, 21, 2.11, 2.133, right? And what? How many degrees is that? 65. 65. Okay. So here's the deal. Here's how we're going to describe this. Okay. Beaky flew. So here's Beaky's. Here's here's what described Beaky's vector. He flew 706. Point eight miles. Okay, now there's a couple ways to do it. This is always confusing for me, but I think so. He flew what? Uh, what did he fly? He flew south, south, south of west, right? So he flew seven hundred and six point eight miles south of west. South west. South west. South. Oh, I, we usually when we do it like this, we say south of west because he's south. Of west 60 degrees south of the west line can you see that yeah. and there you go that this describes beaky's vector see that all right what do you guys think pretty cool right so you i'll give one or two of these on the test all right so i want you guys to practice so let's do another practice problem um i want you guys to get your purple book out here uh, just share off Tegan. That'd probably be fine. Um, let's do this. I want you guys to do page 456. George, can we borrow it? No. Well, I turned right to her. Yeah. And I want you to do numbers 15 and 16. I'd like you to in class today. So we have 10 minutes. Is it going to be great? I want you to put it in your notes. Okay. Page 456. 15 and 16 have a couple good problems. Yeah, just do it in your notes. Yep, do it in your notes, please. So just 15 and 16. For now, yeah, for now. But yeah, get it in your notes. 
Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my God, so I right there. Fifty square plus twenty square. He got me the problem. I found it. Oh, whatever. The magnitude. Now we got to find the remainder. Wait. Why did we solve the? The angle of like our answer. Why did you ask for the direction? Because you don't know the direction, right? You want to know to find the direction, you have to figure this angle out. Because Kiki could have flown on like this direction. Because you want to know where Vicky is, right? I'm trying to figure out where Vicky is. So if I said, if uh, if Cody, some random kid named Cody, really wants to know where Vicky is, I can say Vicky is. 706.8 miles, 60 degrees south and west. Wait, did we just do Yes, we did. I don't know. Yes, yeah, yeah, we did. Is, no, I did. is there a word named Beaky in there and everything? No. We just, we just did, though. Why is it the same problem? Why would that have that? Is, I like going to the very, how would I? Come on, you guys. Give me credit. I'm going to do this. 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 I'm Okay, guys. The word problem is obviously true. It has nothing to do with the problems you see in your book. Okay. Yeah. So we already got it right. If you ever pilots really use vectors a lot, a lot, a lot. Because I'm never a tangent of twenty over I finished. Okay. What's so funny about it? I. Ariana, I, I, and I calculated. I didn't mean like you didn't help. Okay. Like, if you do get done, I want you guys to attempt number. Twenty-six and twenty-seven. So if you do get done with this, I want you attempting twenty-six and twenty-seven. What do we need to do? So if you get done with these two, twenty-six and twenty-seven on the same page is a nice word problem that deals actually with resultants of vectors. See if you can figure it out. <sighs> Twenty six and twenty four fifty six, fifteen, sixteen, twenty six and twenty seven are good problems. Okay, yep. This word problem right here, the one I'm basically. Okay, so there's because I can't read. Is there a river? There is a river. Is there a boat? No. There is a boat. Okay. So there's a river and a boat, right? No. Yes. Okay. So let me draw a picture here. Yeah. Wait a minute. Where's my draw? I'll draw the back. I don't. I don't like this picture. Okay. I don't get it. Now. Okay. There's a river. Okay. And there's a boat, right? See that? Oh, thanks. Hey, what's up? How did you learn something? Oh, thanks. Okay. There's a river. And there's a boat. There's a boat. The boat's going to go that way, right? What is the boat vector? Direct me back. So, okay, so the boat's going okay, directly yeah. west. Right? So here's the boat. It's going directly west. What is its vector? What's the speed of its vector? 35. Yeah, 35 miles an hour. 35, right? 
Now, there's also a vector of the river, right? The river is directly south at 8 miles an hour. So its vector is 8. Right? So when the boat goes across the river, it's going straight across at 35, but it's going to get moved down because it has an 8 mile vector on it, pulling it down. See that? So the boat is not going to travel straight across. Because the boat's going 35, but the 8 mile vector is pushing it to the south. See that? Yeah. So, so this boat vector is going to be this resultant right here, right? So that red, that's going to be really how the boat travels, right? Is that right? So what is question number 26 ask? Uh, question 26 is, what are the resulting speed and direction of the boat? So you need to figure out this speed and direction right here, right? So I need to, they need to find, the speed is going to be the magnitude of the red vector. So it's 35.9. So that's the fact right there, right? Okay. The direction is going to be this angle right here. Does that make sense? Oh, actually, oh. Did you, uh, oh, because it's going to this way, not this way. Oh, yeah. I'm and really, this this isn't drawn very well, because the, the, this vector should be much longer than this, 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 this right? Because right. this blue vector tells me, really, it should look something like this. It shouldn't be that drastic. It should be something like a real life. That would make sense. What's like, that equal, Brady? Come on, turn it around. Something like this, right? So you're really yeah. finding, yeah, it won't be near that like drastic angle, right? Right. So it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a small angle right here, most likely, right? Right. You see what I'm saying? What's that? What is 27 asking for? So. Basically, you want to use this angle here because you, this is the angle that's going to pull you down the river, right? So you've got to travel at that opposite angle up here so when it pulls down. So basically, you just need to find this angle here, right? That makes sense? To compensate for the vector being pulling you down that way. All right. Guys, feel like you kind of have a little bit of handle on this? Yeah. Pretty cool stuff. I'm not going to do homework on it, but I will give probably a word problem test question on vectors. We have to describe it, all that. West of Oh, God. Yeah, this Friday you learn something new, right? No. I mean, I did, but like. It's a good day. It's already a good day. It's only second period and it's already been a good day, Chris. You learn something new. And every day you learn something new is a good day. You sure? You learn something new. What about like you learn to like your mom now? That's not a good day. It's not really learning something. That's just getting bad news. Are you learning the cards? That's not really learning. Well, that's not my definition of learning. Learning is for gaining knowledge that you didn't have before. Like, that's not bad. Okay, but you thought I learned that. Yeah. Okay, but you thought I learned that. Yeah. Okay, but you thought I learned that. Thirty five for you. Wait, wait, wait. 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 Like, what is I'm a big bubbly water fan. I like the cherry bush water. I like a hot water. Do you run? She's like a little bit of flavor water. It's a little bubbly water. Chicken, my son. It's, it tastes good. I don't like the No. 
Oh, because I was gone. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> okay. <laughs> this doesn't say technically geeking because it's not cool. But I have seen the woman because of sure. Since, since. No, well, it was an unexpected part. She came in with no clothes on. She had the thing in her mouth. And I'm like, what the heck? What is this episode? Wait, if you see yourself, is that a sword? What? If you see yourself, what do you mean, see yourself? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> what the heck? Is this? I mean, I thought it might be. What if it's a I don't know what I'm saying. All right. Let's take our seats. Here we go. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Okie dokie. So, uh, would someone like to lead us through good things? Um, Addy, have you ever led us through good things? I don't know. Come on up, Addy. I okay. know you're lying. <laughs> All right. So. No, ma'am. Addy, let's let her. You don't need to get your folder now. If you're over there, just get it quickly and get back to your seat. But you don't. I don't want everyone over there right now because we want to do through do our good things. All right. Hold on, Addy. Let's let her. Duran is a, a little confused over there. So, okay. All right. Duran gave up. She's right there. She looks pale. What? We're going to 